PCC family. We welcome you to our PCC online service. I especially want to acknowledge all the children here, all the youth, the young adults, adults, senior, everyone from all walks of life. We welcome you to our PCC online service. We are so glad that you are here with us. I want to read together with you the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 tells us, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now, how many of us here believe that God is going to work in a very powerful way this evening? Now, how many of us believe that God is with us here this weekend? Amen? Yes, God is with us and I believe that He is going to do something powerful in us and through us as we worship Him in reverence and in awe. Amen? Now let us pray. Father, we thank you for this service. We ask for your holy presence to fill each place, every place, every home, every room that we are gathered here. And we acknowledge your presence with us, Lord, and among us. We ask the Lord, every participating person will experience a fresh touch, a powerful presence, O oh God, from you as we worship you in song, as we receive your word. Lord, speak to us. We ask the Holy Spirit to stir in us the hunger and the thirst, O oh God, to know you more and to draw near to you. Lord, accomplish your will. Accomplish your purpose that you have for us in our life, in our family, as we worship you this weekend. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello church. Welcome back to our weekend worship. God is good, amen. Let us spend some time exalting and magnifying His name.
my eyes Oh Lord Forgive me And I have believed In a lie That you
be magnified in our lives, God. Amen. Amen. Yes, we thank you, Lord. We usually worship God with our tithes, our offering, our faith pledge. You can also keep your offering and bring it back to church when we resume meeting. You also can give online. Please scan the QR code for more details. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just commit back these offerings to you, Father. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your provision. And Father, I pray that you bless every cheerful giver as we give to your kingdom, Father. We want to see your kingdom come and your will be done. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Now let's open our hearts and receive God's word. Did you get a shock when the balloon burst? I did. Well, sometimes you and I are like a balloon. We get so puffed up with our importance. Miss Chen Dui thinks she can bake very well. And she always thinks she is right. That she even refuses to apologize even when she is wrong. She even refuses to send food to the elderly just because she thinks the weather is hot. When we Half our importance, something will happen to burst our balloon, just like what happened to Miss Chandler. Jesus warned us in Matthew 23 12 that whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbled himself will be exalted. The Bible teaches us that if we are too proud and think too highly of ourselves, we are headed for a fall. But if we are humble and realize that we can do great things through God's strength, then we will serve others with humility. So now we know that humility means acknowledging and recognizing total dependence on the Lord and seeking His will for every decision. So now children, if you ever see a balloon again, I hope it will remind you not to think too highly of ourselves, but recognize that all talents and all gifts comes from God to serve others in humility. Children, do you know the opposite of humility? Did I hear someone say pride? Yes, it is. But what is pride? Pride is taking credit for what God gave us. If we fail to recognize everything we have and do because of the mercy and grace of God, we will tend to think that we are responsible for our achievement. Then we will lift our hearts in pride. So let us learn more about humility in the Bible today. The story is taken from the book of Daniel. First, let me introduce to you King Nebuchadnezzar. I know, I know. The name is kind of long, isn't it? Well, anyway, King Nebuchadnezzar was one of the powerful kings during the Old Testament times. But when King Nebuchadnezzar's heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. King Nebuchadnezzar learned what happens when a man fails to humble himself. However, after being humbled by God, he gave proper glory to the Lord. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven 
and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honoured and glorified Him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. When King Nebuchadnezzar boasted, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honour of my majesty? God immediately punished him. While the word was in the king's mouth, God struck him with a mental breakdown and took away his kingdom until he worshipped the king of heaven. Pride is putting ourselves on an equal level with God-given authority. Whereas, humility is recognizing and acknowledging our total dependence upon the Lord and seeking His will for every decision. Hi right, children, now we know that love is humble. Let me suggest you some specific ways to humble ourselves so that our God can be glorified through us and in us. First way, bless those who curse you. You guys are, remember okay, do not curse them back, bless them. Second way, be a servant. You can be a volunteer of many tasks, especially now you are at home every day. Third way, express your gratefulness to your parents, your teachers and those who help you. And the fourth way, Listen to those instead of talking about yourself. Fifth way, praise and honor others. Six ways, ask for, ask for forgiveness about for the wrongs that you have done. Last but not least, give testimony of God's grace. Okay, among all these suggestions, I hope you will choose one of them to show your love to your parents, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends, your dog, oh no, no your dog, okay, especially during this CMCO. Okay, and for this week's online seeds challenge, do something for others and oh, oh well, please do not send us your video, your photos to us because humility means not having to let everyone to know what you have done for your parents and your relatives, your friends, they all came. So God bless you children, remember to share your love by humbling yourself this week, okay? See you next week. Hi PCC family and everyone out there, welcome once again. Now it has been said it only takes 21 days to form a new habit and you know we have been worshipping online for about 13 weeks now and without realizing it some of us may actually be forming bad habits where worship, corporate worship has become something passive where we like watch a show you know like a, like a movie kind of thing. Now, you know, everything that's important in life is something that we make a commitment to keep a habit, whether it is uh, going to work on time or going to study, right? And it is these habits that make us who we are as a people of God. So, I want to ask whether we are making good habits, forming good habits of time alone with God and especially corporate worship during this time. Now, two weeks ago, I encouraged our people to really prepare ourselves spiritually and physically and even dress up so that we can worship the Lord together online. And during that Saturday service, uh, one senior lady heard that and so the next morning, she got up early, dressed herself up and attended the 10 a.m. service again dressed up and she said she really enjoyed doing this why is this important 
no one could see her even if she was wearing her pajamas but you know what God sees and that is the most important thing I want to affirm everyone in the PCC family who have been making the effort to prepare for each weekend physically spiritually and participating fully standing up when we sing and worship lifting our hands and saying aloud amen why because you are honoring God when you hear God's word and respond you're honoring God now, I cannot see you but God can see you see the spiritual habit of corporate worship at set times becomes even more important as we live in very challenging times because even the most faithful of God's people are not spared from the trials and the troubles of life. Today we want to look at the true story from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And it says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Munites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. It says after this. After what? If you look at the previous chapter, it was after Jehoshaphat had carried out some of the most comprehensive reforms to turn the nation back to God and get rid of the idols. You know, he could have told God, God, I've been so faithful to you. And now these three pagan armies are joining forces to destroy everything that we have. And they are just 24 kilometers south of our capital city. God, I don't deserve this. Now, for the last few months, our lives have been changed by an unseen enemy that threatens to destroy both lives and livelihoods. And while the MCO has put lots of things on hold, many of the troubles of life continue to roll on. How do we respond when we receive bad news from our doctor, from our employer, from our business partner? You know, it's natural to grumble and complain. God, this is not fair. I've been so faithful to you, serving you, and I get hit by this trouble. And my non-Christian neighbor is still enjoying life and is trouble-free. Now, it's natural to grumble. It's also natural to just look at ourselves and say, what do I have? Rely on our own abilities. You know, Jehoshaphat had a strong army. He could have told his generals, all right, let's prepare for war and let's just go out and fight. But he decided to do something different. In verse 3 it says, Alarm! Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek Him. I want you to know this. Great need should move us to seek our great God. Let me say that again. Great need should move us to seek our great God. Amen. So, let's read God's word together from this point. And let's read out loud together and participate. Amen. And as we read, I want you to notice how Jehoshaphat prayed. Alright, let's read. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear and save us. Notice, in this prayer, thus far, Jehoshaphat focused on God Himself. He didn't even mention the trouble they were in, the crisis. You see, when we face great danger, we usually pray, God, get me out of this trouble quickly, deliver me now. But you know what? Trash actually causes us to seek God Himself, not just a solution to get rid of the problem. Because really, God is who we really need, our, our total sufficiency, our very life. And if you and I have God, we have everything that we need. And even if God chooses not to deliver us, 
we can still cling to him like Job. Now, Joseph's prayer, firstly, reaffirms God's attributes. This is found in verse 6, where he says, You are the God of our fathers, which means, you know, you've been taking care of all of us from the past, and you are God in the heavens, the ruler of all the kingdoms, and no one can withstand you, including these people threatening us. Now, why is Jehoshaphat reminding God of all this? Has had God forgotten that? No, he was reminding himself and his people who God is so that they will all trust in him. And next, he re recites God's actions. This is verse 7. He says to God, God, you drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and you gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. So he recites what God has done in the past. And that's always good to build our faith. And Thirdly, he reminds God of his covenant promise to hear the prayers of his people when they cry to him in distress. And he actually is quoting from 2 Chronicles chapter 6, 28 to 30. Now, only after reaffirming God's attributes, reciting God's actions, and reminding God of his covenant promises, did he now present his problem and petition. In verse 10, he says, but now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sire, whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us or repaying our kindness by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us for inheritance. Our oh God, will you not judge them? So, you know, if our prayers begin with our problems before long, God becomes smaller in our eyes than our problems. Our problems become so big. But if we pray beginning with God's greatness and His great works in the past, then we will see our God bigger, greater than the problems we face. Come on, can you say good amen? Amen. So this kind of prayer that recites God's you know, attributes and you know, what He's done in the past and reminding Him of His covenant actually grows our faith. And God delights to answer such prayers because they are anchored on His character and on His promises. Now, great need should humble us also to admit our great dependence on God. And this is what Joseph would say. But we have no power to face this vast enemy that is attacking us. We have no power. You know, in the ancient Middle East, kings were proud. I mean, most kings have to be because they have to be tough to inspire confidence in their subjects. And no king would ever admit to the people, I'm scared, I, I don't know what to do, we're helpless. But that's because it's not good for the image, you know. But Joseph admitted before his people, in front of them, saying, we have no power. I don't even know what to do. You see, that's the exact opposite of the leaders who tell their people, oh, we've got just a little problem, folks. It's just a little flu. And it will go away soon. I can hear some of you laughing right now. <laughs> you know, I want you to see something here. In verse 13, it says, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. They were following the example of King Jehoshaphat. Entire families came together. Every man, woman, boy and girl, even the little ones. It was like a family prayer. All coming out in families. And it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all you who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. That's what God said to the prophet. He said, tomorrow, I will fight this enemy for you. You just stand and watch as I bring you the victory. Now, when they heard this prophecy, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korathites stood up and 
praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. This was not just a prayer meeting. It was a time of worship. It was loud worship. And after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise Him for the splendor of His holiness as they went out at the head of the army. What were they singing? Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Now, this is amazing. He is actually sending out the choir, the unarmed singers, in front of the army to face the fully armed enemy. And they are carrying this. They are carrying their musical instruments and they are singing. Now, this is really unusual. They are praising God even before the battle begins. Now, usually, you know, we have no problem singing and thanking and worshipping God, you know, when the battle is over and we have won. But you know what? The enemy was still threatening. And yet, they began to thank and to worship the Lord. Now, I want you to see something here. Church, there is great power when God's people sing together and make the same faith declarations with a loud voice. Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. And doing that in the middle of a crisis before the victory comes, that's especially powerful. Amen. Now, don't underestimate the power of united prayer and united worship because we are not merely singing together. We are actually encountering the holy presence of God. We are entering His holy presence. And when we sing with God's people, even though it's singing online, you know, we cannot see each other. We cannot really hear each other. But you know what? God can see us singing together. God can hear us singing together and he is very pleased and he delights to manifest himself when his people worship him together in that way even though we are physically separated as far as god is concerned it makes no difference all right he dwells in the corporate praises of his people church something incredible happens when god's people sing and worship together out loud can i say a great amen amen and verse 22 tells us what happened. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Sai who were invading Judah and they were defeated. And the Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men of Mount Sai to destroy and annihilate them. And after they finished slaughtering the men from Sai, they helped destroy each other. You see the three armies basically kill each other off. You know? And the men of Judah needed three days to go out and collect the spoils from the battle. Now, thank God it ended that way, but it does not always end that way. Sometimes God strengthens His people to fight. Sometimes He strengthens us to endure. But God is sovereign. God is loving. God is wise. Can you say amen? Amen. That's what they declared. God's love endures forever his unfailing love will conquer every fear doubt and worry and he's stronger than any enemy that we can ever face and when we set when we worship at a set apart times with our spiritual family to enter into god's holy presence at the same time together god will manifest his great power to defeat our enemies can i say a good amen amen so as we come to a close, I want to ask, how would you respond to God's Word today? Now, if you have been preparing yourself physically, spiritually, you know, even dressing up and participating fully at the set apart times of worship, singing out loud, lifting your hands, saying Amen, and asking God to manifest His presence and power every weekend, yes, continue to do so. Because God will manifest His presence. Because that way He will be glorified. Amen. Let's pray for a greater manifestation of God's presence and power. But if you have been taking this very lightly, you know, like watching a show and treating it just as another, you know, another gathering or another something to watch, ah, no one can see what I'm doing. 
I think it's time to repent of our casual attitude to God's holy presence. Would you tell God now, God, from now onwards, I will prepare myself physically, spiritually, and I will participate fully. Yes, let's tell Him that. He is loving, He's forgiving. Now let's pray. Father, we come to You, Lord. We humble ourselves. We repent. If we have had casual attitudes toward You in the weekend, set apart times of worship, we thank You. You are loving. You are kind. Cleanse us now, Lord. Forgive us and receive our commitment today to prepare and participate fully, to enter fully and encounter your holy presence. We thank you for hearing this prayer because we ask this in Jesus' name. All of us people say, Amen. You know, God has demonstrated His love to all of us by sending His only Son to die in our place, to rise from the grave, to ascend to heaven, to send His Holy Spirit to live in us, and one day He will return to take us home. But until then, His love endures forever. His love will never stop, never fail, never give up. And He will rescue us even from the darkest times, even from the most dangerous enemies. And that's why we can sing with the people of God, His love endures forever. Amen. We're going to celebrate this covenant relationship in a few moments as we prepare to eat and drink of the Holy Communion. And we are going to sing this song as we prepare ourselves. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that as we come to your Holy Presence, we ask that you will bless the bread and the cup that we are about to eat and drink. May our hearts be prepared to enter in reverently in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's come. Come to the table of mercy. Prepare with the wine and the bread. For all who are hungry and thirsty, come. And your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation. Receive from his nail scar hand. Eat of the bread of salvation. Come and drink of the blood of the Lamb. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yes, let's prepare our hearts. In a few moments, we will eat and drink together the Lord's Supper and remember His great love for us so that we may come with hearts prepared, with great expectation to receive from His nail-scarred hand. Yes. Eat of a bread of salvation Oh, come and drink of the blood of the Lamb. Drink of the blood of the Lamb. Yes, we come. We come. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
Christ broken for you. Let's eat and remember Him. Held a cup. Yes. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood. Poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. Yes, church. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let's drink together. Yes, thank you, Lord. So we thank you for the wine and the bread. Yes, for we see the life you gave and the blood you shed. We remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. Your wondrous love, you gave your body, you shed your blood, and we remember your wondrous love, you gave your body, you shed your blood. You shed your blood. Yes, amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. You shed your blood. Yes, Father, we thank you for your great love. Jesus, we thank you for your great sacrifice. We thank you that your covenant is sure. We are safe in your love. Amen. Now let's lift our hands to receive the blessing of our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you favor. Wherever you live, work, study or do business. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you, give you His peace, His shalom. And may the Lord provide for every need of your life and more than what you need for this life on earth. And give a generous heart to share, to touch people, to change lives near and far for His glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to receive prayer for any need, please contact us, send us a note. And I want to encourage all of us to stay closely connected with our respective cell groups. And last Wednesday, we had our first Zoom prayer meeting. And this Wednesday, we look forward to another time. If you'd like to join us, do call our church office 
and we will get you connected to that as well. God bless you and see you next week.